So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and iPadOS 15 has now been out for about two weeks for, to the entire public and we've had our chance to play with it, to learn what's new with it, to take advantage of all those new features. But I did want to talk about 15 new features inside of the settings menu that you should really, really take a look at and make sure that you know exactly what's going on with it because a lot of them are game changers. A lot of them talk about privacy and they make sure that you're, you aren't being tracked and make sure that pretty much your privacy is kept secret. And there's also a bunch of other features to help just efficiency and overall just customization when it comes to apps like Safari and the settings app and things like that. But without further ado, let's pull out the iPad mini running iPadOS 15.0 and see exactly what we got going on. Let's hit it. Okay, so let's get started with this video. I'm gonna pull the iPad mini screen up over here and we're rocking, like I said, the iPad mini 256 gigabyte model running iPadOS 15.0. And if you guys wanna see, we'll go into the settings, go into the general, go to the about. You can see that we're running the public version of 15.0. I'm not on any developer beta. All that stuff is done on the M1 iPad Pro behind me. But now that we're all ready to go, let's see exactly what settings we got going on. And the first one we're gonna to touch on is actually Safari. So if you go into your settings menu, pull up Safari, let's scroll down. You can see that Safari, we now have a new settings menu. And this is a little bit interesting because Apple hasn't done too much with Safari and of course, with the first betas of iPadOS and iOS 15, they moved that bar all the way to the bottom, which people were hating. But now inside of here, there's a couple things that you can do. So you now have the opportunity to separate your tab bar or have a compact tab bar. So I'm gonna show you what the compact tab bar looks like. We'll click on that. Let's go into Safari. You can see up here that our tabs are all kind of like overlapping on the top here. We have apple.com, a couple of Gmail, got Cupertino, the weather channel, things like that. And then if I go back into settings, turn to separate tab bar, which is the way that I personally like it, you now see that if we go back into Safari, we now have the URL bar, which is very familiar when, in terms of desktop experience and honestly, your iOS experience. We have a dedicated URL bar, and then we also have the tabs on the bottom. And I do like this new tab structure. It makes it a little bit easier to navigate, but that is the first setting, being able to move and change the compact Safari toolbar and URL bar. So another new thing that came to Safari, because the first three settings have to do with Safari. Let's go back into the settings menu. So extensions actually came for the first time to iPadOS this year. And the extensions originally, when we were in the beta program, they were all pretty much ad blockers, right? That was all that was really out there. That's what I tested it on. But now, apparently with the public release of iOS 15 and iPadOS 15, some new more common extensions like Grammarly, Honey, all those kind of came into play. And the only way to currently access extension is if you go into the extensions tab right here, click on more extensions, it then takes you to a categorized version of the app store fully based on extensions. So everything here, yes, there is a companion app. So there's like a main application where it just so happens that one of the features is an extension. But if you go in here, you have a bunch of different ones. As you can see, now we have like the one password, we have a language translator, shopping list, dark mode, a bunch of different ones that are actually going to be very useful. Like I said, Grammarly is, Grammarly is here. Honey finally has an extension on here, which is nice to see, but it's very, very easy. So if I download Kablock, which is one that I have had in the past before, all I have to do is once it's downloaded, go back into Safari and then turn on that extension. And again, you can see that it auto populated. We go back into extensions, Kablock is turned on. And now that is my ad blocker for Safari. And now for setting number three, again, we're talking about Safari. If we continue to scroll down in the settings menu, you now have a hide IP address section. So this allows you to, again, hide your IP address from any type of tracker. So it says your IP address can be used to determine personal information like location. To protect this information, Safari can hide your IP address from known trackers. So here, as long as you have this hide your IP from trackers, you are pretty much safe to you're pretty much safe when it comes to your IP address being out to the public, right? So that's what Safari is doing. And Apple, again, they focus very heavily on privacy and making that a feature as opposed to kind of just hiding it in the background. Because again, Apple is known for their privacy and I absolutely love it. And then the last thing with Safari is if you actually go into Safari, let's open up a new tab, you now have the ability to change your background. So if you scroll all the way down, this is the Safari homepage, I guess you would say, or the landing page. You press this edit button, you keep scrolling down, you now have the ability to add different background images. So here you can change it to a butterfly, to a bear, we'll X that out. And you can see that now my background is a little bit different, which I love to see. So adding a little bit more customization, turning it into more of like what Chrome is, because Chrome has been able to add that for a very, very, very long time. So that is new with Safari. And those are all the settings that I've noticed that are absolutely new that you should probably know about when it comes to Safari. Okay, so now let's move out of Safari, go back into the settings, and we're gonna be talking again more about privacy. As you guys seen, Apple did make another push towards privacy with their iCloud Plus subscription. So if you're an iCloud user, I think you're automatically put in. So if you're a paid iCloud user, so if you have that minimum, I think it's like $299 uh, iCloud storage, 
plan or whatever, you're automatically upgraded to iCloud Plus. And what that allows you to do is, if you go into your iCloud settings, go into iCloud, you now have a few different options. So the first one we're gonna talk about is actually Private Relay, which on this one I have turned off, I just haven't turned it on quite yet. But Private Relay is an iCloud Private Relay keeps your internet activity private. So Private Relay hides your IP address, browsing activity in Safari and protects unencrypted internet traffic so that no one, including Apple, can see both who you are and what sites you're visiting. So I'm gonna turn that on because I actually like Private Relay. And what Private Relay is, is just imagine a VPN. Imagine Surfshark, imagine NordVPN, but built in natively to your Apple device. So here, once you turn it on, you now have the option to, for your IP location. So for the most part, you like to maintain general location. Because for instance, there's some applications that work on a state-by-state -state basis. So yes, we're not gonna have a pinpoint accurate description of where you are in terms of your IP address, but it still lets you know like within maybe a few miles that you're in that state. I know that's a big deal for people that are in like sports betting and stuff like that. So if you're like in New Jersey, sports betting is legal, so you need to maintain that general location because if you use a country and time zone, it'll throw you all over the world. And at that point, if you wanna use like your FanDuel or your DraftKings app, it won't let you. So for the most part, keep it, maintain your general location, but I like to have this on because again, it stops people from tracking my IP address. And then another one, if you go back into the iCloud, we're gonna stay into the iCloud settings, go into this new hide my email option. This one is actually very, very cool. And it's the one feature that I've been using since iPad OS beta one release. So what this does, hide my email is this new function that allows people to sign up for new applications or create new logins for you know whatever software or website you wanna do. But then instead of using your personal email, you can actually hide your email by creating these fake emails, as you can see, we have for all over and there's such weird emails, right? Like 54PHB98, like no way anybody's gonna know who that email is. So they hide your email, your main iCloud email, and they replace it with this one. But if you do need information that gets sent to this random email, all that stuff is still forwarded to you, to your regular email. So if you do want it, you can see it, but the people sending that email don't actually have your personal email, which is huge in my opinion. I actually love that. So that is the hide my email feature in the new iCloud. So another cool setting that actually came in was for focus modes. So focus modes were introduced in iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 as a way to kind of elaborate on the do not disturb mode. So basically you can create custom do not disturbs and they're called focus modes. So for instance, here we have a personal, a sleep, a work one. I have an added one that's on my iPad that's like when I'm filming, I turn that mode on and nobody can call me and interrupt my filming and things like that. So if you go into your iMessages and you're in a focus mode, one of the things that happens with people that have iOS 15 on the other end is it'll let them know like, hey, this person is in, in the middle of a focus mode, they might not respond to you. But the way to actually turn that off is if you go into an actual you know, iMessage chain, you go to the top, go to those settings, you can actually scroll that down and you can actually turn that off to turn off share focus mode. So that is one setting. So if you don't want people to know that you're in a focus mode and you don't want them to like, I don't know, sometimes there's kind of like a weird situation like, oh, I don't want to talk to them. Almost like keeping your read receipts on, which I never do. I hate having my read receipts on. But again, that's just a new feature that came with the focus modes to make sure that people know that you are in a focus mode. But if you're okay with that person reaching out to you, you can turn it off individually by person. So another really cool setting that was brought to my attention is actually under accessibility. So if we go back into the settings, let's scroll down to accessibility. And if you keep scrolling down to audio and visual and then go to background sounds, this is an awesome situation. So you know all those white noise applications and this is just another example of how Apple's cannibalizing other like businesses inside of their own app store because now they have their own ambient noises built in natively to the iOS and iPadOS ecosystem. So you can turn on background noises and you can hear it'll automatically start playing whatever background noise you want. So I have rain, balanced noise, bright noise, dark noise, ocean, stream, whatever you want. And then after that, you can even actually add it to your control center. So you can see that I have a hearing app on my control center already. So if I go pull up control center, hold this down, you can actually turn off the background noise directly from control center, which is a nice little added feature if you're like working and you don't do well with podcasts or with music and you just want like a silent noise or a white noise. Perfect, I love that it's built in natively. And again, sorry to those applications that Apple is cannibalizing on the run. Another feature that came out with iPadOS 15 and iOS 15 is this feature called Left Behind, right? I actually found this extremely annoying because for some reason it kept telling me that I kept leaving my iPad mini behind every single time I left the house. But if you go into Find My, so you can actually just go into all your iDevices, click on one that you wanna actually not get notified for when you do leave it behind, scroll down and then here, notify when left behind is enabled. So here, receive notification when you leave the iPad mini behind. This can be helpful when taking a device with you. So, and you can also even set things. So it lets you know like whenever you leave this address, then it'll let you know like, hey, you left the iPad mini behind, which is a nice little feature, which is probably pretty important, again, for your iDevices like your iPhone and things like that. 
not really for your MacBook or I don't know what other situation you would need this for, especially because if you were going to work, you would know that you need your stuff. But hey, sometimes people forget things and they need to know like, hey, you left your laptop behind, go back and get it before you're an hour through your commute. Nice little feature. So again, in the same respect that Apple, again, with the backend settings kind of cannibalizing and ruining the business models of a lot of these applications in the App Store, we're gonna continue with that, right? We're going into the settings and if you go into passwords, right? So once you're in the password section and you log in, you can actually go into one of your actual accounts and then set up a verification code. What this means is that you can now natively add a 2FA, so multi-factor authentication or a dual factor authentication to make sure that your privacy is good to go and your passwords are strong enough. And not only that, but if somebody guesses your password correctly, they still need to get that second factor authentication in order to get into your account. But now you can do that natively inside of the settings app with either a setup key or a QR code, which is kind of mind boggling. So shout out to Apple for putting that natively into the system because I think it's a pretty big deal. So the next thing we're gonna actually talk about is if you go back into accessibility and then scroll all the way down and go to this new feature called per app settings. Per app settings is actually pretty cool because it allows you to customize individual apps little by little. So if you, let's say we have one that we wanna change up, maybe the Geekbench one or the Find My, you can click on here and you can actually change up multiple things about these applications down to the type of text, maybe increase contrast, differentiate with color, you know, maybe some applications don't have a dark mode so you can smart invert and things like that. So this is kind of cool because it lets you customize each application individually because some of them are different. You know, some of them have smaller text than others. Maybe you need that bigger text and things like that. I'm personally not really doing that because I kind of like the apps the way they are, but if you do need to do it, it's a feature there inside of accessibility. The next thing we're gonna talk about is actually scheduled summary. So if we go into notifications and then go into scheduled summary on the top, if you turn this on, again, it'll, notification summary is a bundle non-urgent notifications to receive them in a summary in convenient times. So we'll press continue. And here you can choose what applications you want to show up in your scheduled summary. So what this is showing you is just the amount of notifications you're getting per app. So if I wanna do my FanDuel Sportsbook, We'll add that one app and it lets you schedule them as well. So you'll get a scheduled summary in the morning if you want, and then one in the afternoon, and you can add as many as you want. So if you want like a midday one, a right before bed one, or maybe you want it like five in the morning, if that's when you get up, you're more than welcome to do that. We'll turn that on. And now you can see that our notification summary is set up and ready to go. And then if we stay inside of the notification app, one thing that I actually hate is the announcement of notifications when you have your headphones on. So Siri, sometimes when I have my notifications on, she'll start screaming at me saying like, hey, you got a notification. So I actually like to, turn those off because I don't like it when they talk to me. I'd rather just, when I open up my phone or I already get notifications on my watch, the last thing I need is a third form of notification, which is like Siri yelling at me essentially on my headphone. So I like to turn that off, but if you guys like to leave it on, by all means, go for it. So another feature that was brought up with iPad OS 15 and iOS 15 was the ability to do live text, right? So one of the features that if you wanna turn it off, Sometimes it is a little bit confusing because when you point at something that has words or a QR code or something like that, it kind of gets a little bit confusing. So some people like to turn that off. So it's as easy as going into the camera app or going into the camera settings app and then turning off scan QR codes, which will also turn off live text for you. Another interesting one that came again, when it comes to this whole privacy situation is if you go into privacy, into your settings and then go to record app activity. So if you want to turn this on, you can. So save a seven day summary of when apps access your data, like location or microphone and see when apps and websites you visit contain domain. So basically I'm gonna turn this on because it lets you save your app activity. So it lets you know like, hey, how often are they actually pulling data away from you? What kind of data are they pulling away from you? Are you okay after those seven days with all the data that you gave these companies, these apps, these websites? So that's what it lets you know when it comes to app activity, which again is another privacy feature to make you more aware of what's going on in the back end. And then the very last thing that I'm gonna mention is actually still inside of the privacy setting, but if you go into location services, and then if you scroll down to significant locations, I actually, I'm gonna turn this off, but basically what it means is that Apple kind of tracks you and pinpoints what locations you're usually residing at to let you know like, hey, these are significant locations that you're usually at, like your home, your office, or your local gas station that you go to every day, things like that. I'm gonna, I know that it's on right now because it's on by default, but if you wanna turn that off because it does involve location tracking on Apple's side, which is you know a little bit iffy for people, but again, it's an option to turn off if you really want to. But those are pretty much all the settings that I wanted to bring forward to everybody. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, but let's get out of here and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, Apple has kind of been at the forefront of using privacy as a feature for all other devices, right? Apple, about two, three years ago, they had those new commercials with like that lock, right, to again, promote privacy. 
because having privacy through your iDevice or through your mobile phone, through your iPad, through whatever device that you're using is becoming more of a feature. People want to hold on to their own data. People don't want to be taken advantage of. So Apple, again, they double down on it and they make sure that your experience with your devices is as private as possible and you're only sharing exactly what you want to share. So again, I love that Apple's bringing that over to everybody, making it a little bit more digestible to take on all of these new features and all these new applications and things like that. But overall, iPad OS 15 has been extremely stable. I absolutely love all the new features. Yeah, do I wish that we had some real secondary monitor support, some real multitasking, things like that? Of course I do. But I'm just taking whatever Apple is giving us and taking full advantage of it. But again, don't ever buy a product for the promise of what it's gonna do tomorrow. Buy it for what it's doing currently and what it's doing well currently. And I'm gonna stick to that model for as long as I keep buying technology, right? But that's gonna do for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you made it to the end of the video. Really, really do appreciate you. You guys are legends. And leave a comment down below saying, you know, which feature you didn't know about, what was new. Maybe you knew all these features already because you guys are so into the iPad game just like me. But again, that's gonna do for this video. Peace.